We gather on this glorious Christmas morning and we welcome you from your own homes on Facebook or on YouTube at whatever time of day it might be, whether it's early in the morning or late at night. And this year we celebrate a little differently, but we still celebrate for the child who has long been foretold was born in all those years ago, bringing joy and hope to the world. So we come as we are, wherever we are, and offer our worship to Jesus. Lord, come close to us as we come close to you. We join and sing as good as we can. It was on a starry night. Christmas Day, we usually have the kids bring in their Christmas toys and the special gifts and the adults bring theirs, but we've got nobody here. So it makes it really hard. I can't get to play with the Christmas toys this year. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, last year, last year we had one of those kind of remote control things, you know, that fly. I wow. it, that was great fun playing with that. I nearly crashed it into Mrs. Burnley's head, which was a wee bit of a problem, but she forgave me, I think, about New Year's Day um, for that one. And I remember one Christmas in one church, uh, a boy had got a new bike and he cycled up and down the aisles in his brand new bike. I thought, do you know that took me back to a Christmas I had when I was a wee boy. Wee? Oh, I yeah. did, I, I, This was my first real bike, right? But in those days, when, when you were learning kind of cycling, you got these big three-wheeled trikes, you know, it was like a bit like a, a wee three-wheeled car kind of thing, but it was a bike, 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 bike. You know, like the wee toddler ones you get, yeah. but bigger, right? So I get one of these, and on Christmas morning, apparently I got up, 
and, and I got on the bike because I was so excited and I fell back asleep and I was cycling around the living room <laughs> on my wee Christmas bike and, and my mum and dad continued to tell that story and embarrass me about it. Although that there's a wee added bit to that kind of Christmas trike story, um, maybe about a year or so afterwards, uh, I was doing races down the hill. You know how you used to oh, yeah, kids yeah. So we were racing down this wee hill, and there was this wee bridge with a, a kind of right angle turn, and, and I come over the hill, right down, bombing at 100 hours an hour at my wee trike, and my trike wheel caught the end of the bridge, and tipped the whole bike up, smashed it to smithereens, and I landed up in the burn soaking wet. Um, and ever since, I never, my mum wouldn't buy me another bike. It's a hard one. It's It's terrible. Imagine that. Okay, man. And, okay, what, what about you? Have you had ever, what, what's your favourite Christmas gift that you can remember? Uh, my favourite ones as a child were getting goalkeeper gloves. Love oh, football. Goalkeeper and gloves. my first St. Martin in 1980. Ah. Back in the days when St. Martin were really good. Who, so, who was your goalkeeping hero? It would have been Billy Thompson. Oh, right, I remember him. Yeah. My, mine was a guy called Roddy McKenzie, played for Airplane in right, Northern Ireland. Yeah. And, and I remember once I used to get autographs, used to wait and sign. And once Roddy touched my head, patted my head, and shook my hands, and I refused to wash for about three days afterwards because <laughs> the blessed Roddy had touched me. You know, so, so it's exciting, isn't it, yeah. getting those fantastic. Was there any kind of Christmas gifts you got you thought, what's this for? Um, I remember the kind of biggest Christmas disappointment would have been that I was desperate to get an Adam and the Ants annual one year. Oh. And on Christmas morning, when Santa and Mum and Dad gave the presents, there was no Adam and the Ants annual. And then later on in the day, Grand and Grandpa, Grand, Aunts and uncles were coming and mum kept on saying, <laughs> maybe granny and grandpa will bring it. And so that was the thing I was looking forward when granny and grandpa came and it never came. So that was the one big Christmas. Oh, did, did you never get it? I didn't get, get it. it. So oh. all the visitors over the next few days, I kept on thinking maybe they are going to bring it. So that, that was probably the first time there was a present on my list that never came. How disappointing is that? And did you never buy it later in life? Is it was so bad. <laughs> well, I, they probably so, only made about four yeah. copies of it, so it's bounty I'm getting sold in that <laughs> I, I had an auntie, right, yeah. who, who used to work in a, a, a kind of haberdashery shop, right? Haberdashery, you know, sold all the hats, scarves, all those kind of things, wool, right? And, and she'd worked here all her working life, as far as I get. And, and I think she used to get a pick of all the throwaway rubbish, right? And she kept it all in this big ottoman, this big box, right? And every Christmas she would say to us, right boys and girls, go and choose your Christmas present out of the box, you know? And inside the box was absolute rubbish. Ties that were just so hideously horrible <laughs> that you could never wear them. But she was dead proud of giving us these horrible ties. So, so I, I collected a horrible tie every Christmas for my auntie. And again, funnily enough, that it had quite an advantage because when I worked in the civil service for a short time, we used to have a horrible tie competition every couple of months. And I won for the whole year, right? I had enough ties to win it for the whole year. The most horrible tie in the civil service and I was the winner for a whole year. So that, that was quite brilliant. So, so something that was rubbish turned out to be really useful later on. I wonder, you know, see that story we were talking about Jesus and the wise men? Uh -huh, yeah. and, and they brought gifts, didn't they? Gold, they certainly did, yeah. frankincense, and, and that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, some of the presents, it must have seemed odd to give them a baby, was it not? Very true, yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the gold we can get, because you could, could sell, buy that, sell it, and get some money, and get what you really need, like a PlayStation or something else, you know, or even an Adam and the Ants. <laughs> kind of book a, a, an album, but I mean, merit and frankincense, you know, it just seems odd, but they were kingly gifts, was that right? Kind of royal yeah. gifts. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, wonder, I wonder what kind of Christmas presents the boys and girls got this year. And the mums and dads too, and the grannies and grandpas, I wonder what they got, what do you think? 
Who hard to say. Hard to say. What, what about Michael? What did we have Michael get? Uh, well, he's a huge fan of Toy Story. Oh, right. I like and Toy Story. Big Hero 6. So he already had uh, some woodies. Uh -huh. And uh, he's going to have a Buzz Lightyear. Oh, brilliant. I like Buzz Lightyear. And the Rex, the dinosaur. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> so some really good gifts that some toys, that he'll yes, enjoy. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, I hope everybody has got some brilliant gifts today that they've been able to share. And let's just join and sing another one of our carols. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word, concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. 
But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word, and to him be all the glory and all the praise. Well, it's been quite a time this Christmas. And I've been here in the church recording and I've been in to collect things and to pick things up. And the other day I met a little friend, Maximus Mouse. And he came and he said to me, Minister, I saw an angel. An angel, you say, Maximus? Yes, a real live angel with wings and halos and dazzling light. And when was this? I asked him. Just the other day, said Maximus. Oh, I said, Maximus, that's interesting. Because normally I could say maybe it was the school or our church children rehearsing for their nativity service. But because of this virus pandemic, nothing like that is happening this year. What, said Maximus? Ma Mr. Merlin, does, does that mean that Christmas has been cancelled? Oh, I said, of course not, Maximus. Christmas is still happening. Oh, thank goodness for that, said Maximus. It would be terrible to cancel Christmas. There is usually mountains of leftovers for the mice that it feeds us for weeks. All the crumbs for they miss mince pies and, and those wee biscuits and shortbread and, and the sweeties that all the children have dropped for their Christmas service. Oh, I said, trust you to think about your stomach, Maximus, eh? Well, well, Mr. Murnan, I said, we, we poor church mice have got to eat and if all the parties and Christmas dinners are cancelled, then we're going to be hungry mice. Oh, don't you worry, Maximus. I have never let you down. No, Mr. Murnan, you, you never let us down. So, Maximus, tell me about the angel that you saw. Well, it, it took me by surprise, Mr. Murnan. I, I, I was in the chancel sweeping up for you, and I saw this great bright light and a whirring noise, and there it was hovering over me, and my jaw dropped open when it spoke to me. Well, go on, Maximus. Well, what did the angel say? Uh, it said, hi, Maximus. Oh, that doesn't sound very angelic-like to me, I said. Oh, Maximus was feeling a bit disappointed. So, Mr. Murnan, what, what does an angel sound like? You are bound to be an expert in angels. Well, Maximus, in, in lots of Bible stories where the angels appear, folk are pretty terrified of them. So for an angel to say, hi, does not seem very scary to me. Did the angel say anything else, Maximus? Yes, he said something about being highly flavoured. I can tell you, Mr. Murnan, I was scared then because I thought the angel was going to eat me. Maximus, are you sure the angel said flavoured and not favoured? Eh, well, it might have been. You, you know my hearing is not always very good. So what do you think the angel was doing, Mr. Murnan? I think he was practising his lines, Maximus. For in the Bible it says that the angel appeared to Mary and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. And why, why was Mary God's favourite? Because she was a special one, chosen to give birth to God's Son that we know as Jesus. So, so then, Mr. Murnan, is is God preparing for the birth of another baby if the angel is out practicing his words? Hmm. 
not likely, Maximus. He's just reminding us of the promises of God. And maybe reminding you that even mice are special. For God loved and favoured us all. And the birth of Jesus at Christmas is a reminder of just how much God cares for everyone. That he came amongst us to share the good news that this angel Gabriel announced to Mary thousands of years ago. Wow, said Maximus. It really was an angel here in Paisley. Maximus, I said, God's messengers are everywhere. In Glasgow, in Aberdeen, in Airdrie, in Falkirk, in Shetland, in Africa, in India, in America, in Canada, in Sweden. You'll find them everywhere, even in Greenock. Wow. That's amazing, said Maximus. God is still real and his angels are everywhere sharing the good news. That's right, Maximus. Christmas keeps on happening every day. When God makes himself known in the world and it's never postponed. Merry Christmas to you, Maximus, when it comes. And a Christmas cracking time for you too, Minister. But but did you know that I'm, me and Maxina have had a little baby? And, and, and if you would like to see him, I've brought him here with me today so that you can see him. He's called Minimus. So here is Minimus. And I'll bring him over so that you can all see him because he's a tiny little baby mouse. Isn't he beautiful? Well, Maximus, I didn't know you were going to become a dad again. But Minimus looks beautiful to join our family. I hope he and everyone has a wonderful Christmas day. From a time of worship, a moment of celebration. May we take the joy of Christmas into our homes and community, continuing the heavenly song and celebrating in quiet ways or loud, with others or by ourselves, that Jesus is with us, God is with us, Emmanuel. <laughs> 